Pennsylvania hadn't chosen a Republican president since 1988, but thanks in part to support from rural communities where the steel industry still clings on, Donald Trump flipped the state in 2016. The collapse of the industry was devastating, but U.S. Steel's Clareton Coke plant remains, the largest Coke plant in the U.S., and at the local union hall, Jim McLaughlin explains that it was to safeguard the plant's future that he voted for Trump. Under every president, we've taken a hit. Republican, Democrat, and the trade agreements, both parties have to agree to it. I wanted something different. Donald Trump was clear when he was campaigning. We're going to bring steel back. And Trump won here because of his stated opposition to trade deals that led to a glut of cheap imported steel and his pledge to investigate whether the U.S.'s reliance on steel imports is a threat to U.S. national security. But a decision on that may still be several months away. The White House is reported to be split on the issue. At the Clareton Union Hall, there's disappointment, not least because while the White House hesitates, steel imports have soared. I thought it would have been done in the middle of summer make a decision, but overseas, they know this might be coming and they're just dumping even more. Willard Jones didn't vote for Trump. We're, we're still flatline, like, you know what I mean, since the election. But though he never trusted Trump, he was willing to retain some hope that hasn't yet been justified. I'm not sure that he believes anything other than, you know, money. But money for all? Money for... Yeah, for the top. That's what I see in it. Several times over the last year, Donald Trump has touted his job creation skills only for job losses soon to follow. The most infamous example is the Carrier factory in Indiana. Carrier will never leave. But since then, hundreds of workers have quietly been laid off from the plant as jobs move elsewhere. Jonathan Grunsky is the president of the Clareton branch of the United well, Steelworkers. That's what seems to be his nature of, you know, saying something and going the opposite way. There's still hope in the Mon Valley, but having been failed by both the Democrats and Republicans in the past, if Trump's words turn out to be empty, they say it's nothing new. But you have to remember one thing. We've been promised a lot of things over the years that nobody's ever come through with the promises. Donald Trump didn't pledge to revitalize communities here in the Mon Valley with ambitious plans to refashion them as hubs for 21st century jobs, but by pledging to return them to a heyday not seen for 70 years. For many here, it was worth a try, however improbable. Shia Britansi, Al Jazeera, the Mon Valley, Pennsylvania.